in my body. Every size, every line, every girl, every guy, everybody who don't identify. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hi, hello. My name is Loey. A lot of you guys have been sending me messages, tagging me in TikToks, sending me emails all about the movie Antrim, which has gained a lot of popularity in recent weeks. This is said to be the deadliest movie of all time. Do not watch if you're easily scared. In the late 80s, a movie by the name of Antrim was created. So the movie itself is kind of creepy. It's not like super scary, but the reason that people think that it's cursed is because everybody like in history who has watched it has died within the next 24 hours after they watched the movie. And supposedly throughout the movie, there's like a subliminal audio message, like a chant kind of, that summons a demon into your room while you're watching the movie. Maybe it's the idea that we're going to be quarantined forever that makes people want to turn to a cursed film. But nonetheless, I took one for the team and dove headfirst into Antrim. And what I found really surprised me. You see, Antrim is being hailed as the most dangerous film of all time. Antrim is, it's kind of the holy grail of underground cult films that no one has seen, except for a handful of film festival programmers who are now dead. And the rumor is that the film is cursed and anyone who watches it will die. And as a result, it, it, it's been lost for years. Some people don't think it exists. Some people claim to have seen it and lived. I saw 15 minutes of it, so there's definitely something out there. Um, and now apparently, you guys have found it. So Antrim, as it is introduced to us, is a film from back in the late 1970s that was never given a worldwide release. The film, upon completion, was sent to several film festivals, but every single person who screened the movie died in a horrific accident after. Following that, in 1988, a theater in Budapest, Hungary, burned to the ground while showing Antrim. Bystanders who witnessed this event say it is as though the theater just caught on fire by itself and it took the lives of 56 people that night. When looking into the cause of the fire, because it's not that uncommon for fires to start in the projector room due to the nature of film. It is very flammable, easy to catch on fire, I suppose, or at least it was back then. It turned out that multiple fires had all started at the exact same time, originating within the audience. After this, Antrim was mostly buried away, not to be seen by people again, but it did gain notoriety as the film that kills. So in 1993, a small local theater in San Francisco decided to show a screening of the film. Shortly into it, people began acting really, really bizarrely. Before people took their seats in the theater, they were very aware of the dangers that Antrim held. For legal reasons and also as a warning, there's also a disclaimer at the beginning of the film letting you know of the tragic events that seem to follow it and that if anything happens, nobody is to be held responsible. Yet the crowd began to stir and after a couple of minutes watching the film, Everyone leapt out of their chairs and began stampeding towards the door. This turned into a tragedy which caused the death of a pregnant woman as well as injured more than 30 people. It turned out later in toxicity reports that everybody who was in the theater had large traces of LSD in their systems, despite everyone saying that they did not take it in in any capacity. Upon being investigated further, it was found that an employee of this theater, Richard Sammy, had slipped the drug into the popcorn butter, causing this tragedy. Nobody who was present for the film wanted to comment in Antrim's official release. And that all brings us to today, where a team of people has somehow unearthed a singular copy of Antrim, a movie thought to be lost to time, buried due to the bizarre nature of all of these deaths surrounding it. It's the most famous film that's never been seen. 
So uh, I made a Google alert for it and, um, you know, waited to see if, you know, anything happened. Put out the alert in 2007 or 2008 and I didn't get a notification until 2014. So it was up for sale at an estate auction in Connecticut. So I went out there. I got it for a song, thank God. <laughs> and did you go, did you, did you get it because you wanted to see it? No, actually in this case, um, uh, I thought that it would uh, be a really good film to sell. I thought it could be very commercially viable. You know, I was surprised when the response that I got was that uh, they didn't think that it would do well commercially, that there wasn't a, a big enough market. I think that the real reason though was that people were scared of the film. That's when I heard from the guys at Else Films. Um, they wanted to buy it. The first roughly eight minutes of this movie are spent discussing the intense nature surrounding it. And then when the movie begins, you have quite the disclaimer to sit through. By continuing to watch this film, you agree that the producers of this film have made you aware of the history and dangers associated with Antrim. The producers, distributors, cast, crew, unions, and theater management on all levels are released of all liability for any event that occurs to you during or after your screening, including but not limited to illness, injury, mortal danger, or death. If you disagree in any way with this notice, you must leave the theater now. Antrim is so dangerous that even its trailer came with a warning like this. It tells the viewers, the following preview contains images which are rumored to be haunted or cursed. It is suggested that you do not watch this material alone, or at the very least, inform someone that you have watched it. I watched Antrim by myself while doing my makeup, unless you count my dogs as an audience, and I have not told a soul until now that I have viewed it, so uh, Hopefully the curse flies right over me. Within the first few minutes of the film, a pair of siblings, Orly and her little brother, Nathan, lose their family dog. Nathan begins experiencing extreme nightmares in which he is told repeatedly that his dog has gone to hell. He's very concerned about this and very upset that his dog has not gone to heaven. And so in an attempt to calm him, his sister takes him to the woods where they decide to dig a hole to hell to get their dog back. Spoilers ahead if you do plan on watching this film, I will leave a timestamp down below so you can skip ahead and avoid the spoilers. Nathan's sister tells him that they are going to the forest where Lucifer himself, the devil himself, landed upon earth when he was thrown out of heaven. And as they are about to enter the forest, she sees a notice along with a suicide prevention hotline and you realize where they are. This film actually had a limited release in Japan uh, earlier this year. So it makes sense, I guess, why there would be something akin to the suicide forest in it. Yes, they are digging a portal to hell in the suicide forest. As they dig, you realize that Orly is just trying to help her brother move on from his loss. While they are digging this hole, really a lot of their day is spent camping, hanging out, running around, playing tag. But what she doesn't realize is as they are digging deeper and deeper, they are very much so entering something. So the movie chronicles these two entering the five layers of hell, things getting weirder and weirder as they go on. Throughout Antrim, you see various shapes, symbols, and footage that does not seem like it is supposed to be there. And it's actually referenced really early on in the kind of documentary portion that they believe that somebody altered this one copy of Antrim that is left because there's all of this bizarre footage spliced in. And it just doesn't make sense. The entire film, you're on edge waiting for the next weird thing to pop in that has nothing to do with the movie. That almost seems to have a plot of its own and is super creepy to watch. Maybe there's something else that follows this film and tries to stop it from getting seen by the world. That's very superstitious, but... That actually really scared me. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that makes sense. You know, if, if you see some classified document, then maybe the CIA wants you to meet with an accidental misfortune. And so the fact that a lot of people who saw this film met with some kind of misfortune, it's like, was it the filmmaker? Was it the film? Or some other force wants to kill you after you've seen it because it's revealed something to you that it doesn't want you to know. So I suppose now is as good of a time as any to let you guys know that Antrim is a movie that was made in 2018. It was not made back in 1970, nor was it lost and re-earthed due to time. This is a found footage style horror movie akin to The Blair Witch Project or Paranormal Activity. Antrim capitalizes really heavily on the fact that you're freaked out the entire time because you believe you are going to be cursed from this film. The movie itself is a simple enough concept, freaky for sure, but it's all of these demonic figures that are spread throughout the film. The sigils that you see that you believe are cursing you, as well as these children, these literal children, unknowingly actually digging a hole to hell that's all so freaky. This movie did such a good job at being a found footage, realistic style horror film that it fooled everybody. Seriously, in all of these TikToks, I don't see a single person talking about the fact that this is not a real movie, not even in the comments section. The fact that we can have something akin to The Blair Witch Project, which fooled everybody into thinking it was a real found footage film in 2020, when we have so much technology, we have Google at our fingertips. The fact that still so many people believe this movie is real and that this curse is real is bananas to me. And I think it's amazing. There's a lot to unpack with Antrim from the demonic nature of this film to the plot itself, to the curse surrounding it and all of the history around that. And to that note, I highly, highly recommend you guys go and watch it. It was like $3.99 to rent on YouTube. I really, really, really highly recommend it. Um, definitely will scare the heck out of you <laughs> if you are looking for something freaky. I watched Midsommar the other night, um, which is a very different film, mind you, and I don't like compare the two. They're not even on like the same playing field, not in terms of like one being better than the other, just in terms of like the kind of movies that they are. I was expecting Midsommar to scare the living crap out of me, um, to have me awake for days, and instead I was just left with a headache feeling very confused. It wasn't a bad movie, but by comparison Antrim scared me significantly more and now even knowing the curse isn't real and there is no demon coming after me I still feel kind of freaked. I have a weird pride for this movie despite not really having any connections to it before. Um, I had never really heard anything about it, had never looked deep into it or looked to the people that made it or acted in it or anything like that and yet after watching it I have this like immense sense of pride that it was able to fool so many people into thinking it was a real movie, a real film, and it is a real film, like you can go watch it, but it's fiction, like the curse surrounding it is fiction, nobody died connected to it. I think the fact that it has fooled so many people in that regard is so cool. Anyway, I'm just rambling and gushing now, so I'm gonna stop doing that. I love you guys very, very much. Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. If you have watched Antrim, make sure not to dangle your legs off the bed tonight, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!